Hey y'all, welcome back. All right, we're going old school today. So we have done the cylinder, we have designed creatures with a sphere, and we have also designed creatures with a cube. So last but not least, we are doing a cone today. But you're probably noticing something a little different. One, I'm not using my sketchbook. I got good old fashioned printer paper from CVS right here. And two, I'm using your standard 2H pencil. It's uh, Dixon Ticonderoga. Not that that matters. A number two is a number two. So those of you that are following along with me or wondering what materials you can draw with, you don't need to spend a lot of money at all. Now, yes, I buy a little bit pricier stuff like the Faber-Castell pencils and the Moleskin sketchbooks, but listen guys, if, if you apply the fundamentals to drawing, you can draw on anything. You can draw on a napkin. But without further ado, let's jump into designing creatures with a cone. Now, before I get into the actual creature, I need to put an ellipse down here. Okay, so I'm going to show you a very, very clean and easy way to do a nice looking ellipse. One, you saw me in one continuous motion putting the ellipse down. Now, if I were to turn my paper horizontal, oh, I'm sorry, vertically like this, you will see that the ellipse is sitting vertically. Now, I have my paper tilted. However, the way I'm sitting is I'm, I'm looking this way. I am not drawing with my wrist because that will make banana shapes and bowy shapes and you don't want that. Second, I'm not drawing with my elbow, which will do the same thing in big sweeping motions. I am drawing with my shoulder. And this is something that I learned years ago in industrial design while learning how to do product design. Okay, so without further ado, let's get back into this. Now, you see that it's not that dark because you don't need it that dark. Secondly, if you were to look at the outer crest of this ellipse, so if I were to turn the paper this way, you can see that the outermost edge is here. I'm going to put a tiny little dot. And I'm going to put a tiny little dot over here. You don't need to draw the dots. I like doing it. I've been doing these for years. I've done thousands of ellipses, but I like putting the dots as an indicator of where I need to pay attention to. So what I need to do now, very lightly, this is how I'm going to hold my pencil. You can see that I'm, I'm lightly pinching it like this. Okay. And I'm going to put my pinky down as a guide, but it's going to be slightly off camera. And I'm just going to lightly put in a horizontal line. It's going to connect both dots. So essentially you're just cutting the ellipse in half. The second thing you need to do is you need to look at your image. Well, your sketch straight on. So don't tilt your head and look at this as if you're writing, look over your paper, physically look over it so that you can split the ellipse in half vertically and where those lines crisscross, that's where I'm going to put the third dot. Now, why is that part important? Well, I want to give it a little disclaimer and that is cones are probably the easiest ones to draw even more so than a sphere because a cone, essentially, you just have to put that ellipse down and then that's it. You just connect the edges of a vertical line. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. One, you're going to need to put a vertical line going straight up from that point. Make sure that your shoulder is locked. You're not doing this with your wrist and you're not doing this with your elbow. And also, if you're drawing along with me, notice how every time that you go back over your previous line, it's not exactly over that line. That's okay. What's going to happen is, especially if you're doing this with wooden graphite pencil and not mechanical pencil, is that the graphite spreads. So unless you're doing minute, finite details, your graphite is going to spread so the lines will look thick, especially if you tilt your pencil to the side. The more you tilt it to the side, the more surface area you're going to use on that pointed graphite and that's what makes shading and all of that stuff. But anyway, that's like a whole nother lesson. It doesn't matter how far up you go, but I want to go far enough to where I have a, a pretty decent looking cone. As it doesn't look flat. Okay. Second thing you need to do is you need to go to those points that you have on the edge of that ellipse, and then you're going to connect them. Now lock that arm. Okay. And make sure that you have a nice straight line. Wherever that touches, put a little dot there. 
And then what you're going to do is, I mean, it's like connect the dots. It's done for you. You connect this one to the side of the ellipse over here. And very, very lightly, you're going to brush your pencil across that area. And voila. Ladies and gentlemen, you might have just drawn your very first cone. Or if this is your 397th, congratulations, it's a little bit better than your previous one. Okay, so now that we have a cone in place, how are we going to turn this into a creature? And I just want to say that you do not need to put anything else on this at all. You don't need to darken it. You don't need to prove to us that it is there. This is just a guide. Now remember in my previous lesson where I turned a cylinder into a slimy alien creature. You don't have to use the actual shape of what you're drawing as the body of the creature. You can if you want. In this particular instance, I actually am because I think a cone is pretty interesting. It kind of reminds me of what a maybe an alien beetle would look like or almost a jellyfish if it were to walk around, you know. There, there's some strange bugs out there that have this kind of stuff. Speaking of bugs, I think that's what we're going to do for the lesson today. But anyway, back to the, you know, simple shapes and everything. You can draw a simple shape and then have a creature within that shape, but it's not that shape. <laughs> if that confused you, um, go look at my previous video where I put a creature inside of a cube. The creature was not cube shaped, but it fit within the bounding box. So I could do a swirly, crazy eyeball thing in here, and it would fit inside the shape of a cone. Okay, I'm assuming you get the gist of that. Now, let's have some fun. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some asymmetrical elements to this creature and then I'm going to make it as gross as I can. We are going Lovecraftian because why not? And also because we can. All right, we're not drawing cute stuff here. This is this is horror. This is cosmic horror. Now, right now as I'm drawing this, I don't have a reference. I mean, I have my computer screen up on my right and I'm actually looking at a uh, pictures of iguana. I don't know why it's up, but I was just studying iguana scales, probably because I'm going to be doing a lizard soon. But anyway, we're going Lovecraft, and the other thing is, earlier today I actually watched the uh, 1986 remake of Invaders from Mars, you know, directed by Toby Hooper. It's a hidden gem. I grew up in the 80s, so I'm an 80s child that pretty much lived in the golden age of horror movies. I don't think any other decade had horror quite like the 80s. You could argue that it started pretty well in the 70s. You know, I mean, you had The Exorcist, you had Westworld, you had uh, Invasion of the Body Snatch. Like, there were some good ones. But I think the 80s, just it, it just really blew up. I mean, you had Chud, you had The Gate, Freddy Krueger, Jason, American Werewolf in London, Aliens, Predator, uh, Howard the Duck, even with the creatures on there. Like, it was nuts. Crazy decade. Okay. I don't know. Wait, I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. So, what am I doing down here with these shapes? You'll notice how I put some, a little wave here, but then made an asymmetrical wave here, and then put another one here. It's because I want some really cool tentacles to come out at us, okay? And I'm going to show you how to add depth to this, too. One of the cool things about using a cone is that the head of it is already pointed, so it's going to make you put more detail right down here in the front because you know a cone spreads out as it sits on the ground. I might have this thing floating, maybe it's like a floating brain slash membrane. Um, so like all the details are gonna be placed right out in front because this is going to be my selling point. And you can see I'm leaving the draw through technique here. Um, you know what, actually on a side note, speaking of the draw through technique, I have that vertical construction line telling me how to split the creature in half in the cone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start stacking a couple more ellipses. Ellipses, ellipses, ellipsi, however you want to say it. Now as I go up, the vertical part of the ellipse is going to get smaller and smaller. Now why is that? It's because if you were to stack ellipses on the table, and then keep stacking them, stacking them, stacking them, stacking them. Eventually, that ellipse is going to flatten out when you look directly ahead of you, 
in you know, it's basically the horse horizon line. Okay, it's it's the line of sight. Okay, so once we have that line of sight established and we start stacking those ellipses, uh, we can start putting in some tentacles. So one of the cool things that, that I like doing with tentacles especially is adding a little bit of chaos in there. So notice how loose I'm keeping my hand. Well, I want to address something. This is a question that I get asked probably maybe two or three times per month, depending on how many times I post my work online. And the question is this, Bobby, how do you keep your work so clean? How do you not smudge your graphite? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you my secret. And believe it or not, every single one of you watching can do these three things and you're going to have a cleaner sketchbook than anybody you will ever know, okay? Rule number one, keep your dang hands off of the drawing. That's one of the reasons why it gets so smudged. Stop using your fingers to, to shade, okay? And if you must erase, do not, I repeat, do not rub it with your hand to get the shavings of the eraser off of the paper unless absolutely necessary. You'd be surprised at how many you can get off by blowing it with air and then you take an eraser and you just dab it and it gets up the rest, okay? Rule number two, um, when you start shading and everything, make sure that you have everything layered nicely, okay? The thicker the foundation that you lay down, the more graphite stays on the paper. So those of you that have, you know, sketchbooks that are maybe two, three, four years old, you notice that if you have a nice shaded drawing, the page on top of it when you close the sketchbook will eventually smudge it. It's just inevitable. I mean, yeah, it's, it's probably a good idea at some point to put some fixative on there, fixative, but that's more for like charcoal and stuff. Okay. You want to avoid that stuff because it, you, you can never go back and change your drawing if you spray it with fixative, which is like a, a con of that. I like fixative, like it really does work, but it's, it does more harm than good, in my opinion. Okay, you see this uh, chaos right here. I love putting chaos in here with tentacles because they can go any way you want. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Okay, so uh, rule number three. So we okay. So what we did, um, keep your hands off of the paper or off of the drawing, and then two, you want to make sure that you layer nicely, layer layer a thick amount on there so that it doesn't it doesn't smear very lightly applied uh, graphite because that's it really does smudge it. If I do this and just stop, that's gonna that's gonna look like crap in about five months. Now, if I keep this drawing separate from everything else that I own, and I don't close it in the sketchbook, then it, nothing will happen. Oh, yeah. And last but not least, and this is my personal little trick, rule number three, add black, black Prismacolor with it. And I'm going to show you why. So I got black Prismacolor up here. Those of you that are new to my channel, you've probably seen me do this before. Now, typically, I like drawing with Faber-Castell 4B. But since we're using a 2B, it doesn't really matter. You put the graphite down, okay, you start shading, and you do a minimum of three different directions. Okay, so there's one direction. You're gonna physically turn the page. Not your body, you're gonna turn the paper. Your body, listen, this is uh, gonna be a, like a little side note for you guys before I get into the Black Prismacolor tutorial, and that is when you turn your body to try to get good lines, you're going to screw it up. It doesn't look good. Every single person in watching this video has a specific, comfortable way of applying the best line possible, whatever angle your arm may be. Okay, and you want to turn your paper, but keep your arm at that angle so that your shading looks good. So you're going to do a minimum of three different passes. I say minimum. Minimum will give you at least a decent start. And then once you put that, I'm going to show you the trick. Black Prismacolor is wax based. You're going to keep that sharp, very sharp. And you're going to apply a nice amount of shading directly on top of the graphite. And not only does that add a new 
and cool looking texture to it, it's going to start filling up more gaps that the graphite couldn't. Because when you're, when you're done with that, you're going to take that number two pencil again, or whatever graphite you're using, and guess what folks? You're going to go right back over the black Prismacolor. Now imagine doing a 12 hour drawing. Usually when I do my pencil illustrations, I'll get in, I don't know, maybe 30 to 40 different passes covering a body of a creature. It's so much fun like that. Okay, again, I'm using number two. And I'm just gonna push a little darker inside there where the opening is for the tentacles. Now obviously I don't wanna push too hard. A number two can only go so dark before it starts to reflect the light source in your room and then it gets shiny no matter how you turn the page. It's really annoying when that happens. That's when you know you went too dark with the tool in hand. But, can't go wrong with black Prismacolor because you can make that jet black inside there where the least amount of light is touching. And then guess what? You can't get any darker than that. That's black. And then you can fade that off into the light source, uh, you know, like ambient light or whatever. And then you take your graphite pencil and then you go back over where, where the uh, shaded wax starts to break up. Okay, so you, again, the texture that you get with a black Prismacolor is going to be different than that of graphite. It's gonna look more broken up, it's gonna look more gritty. That's the beautiful part of it. You can get some awesome texturing with fur, dirt, hair, all of that stuff with black Prismacolor and then your regular graphite will, will go back over the area of black Prismacolor because graphite is harder and you can, get, you can get sharper with graphite and it goes in between the grooves of the paper much better than a wax-based pencil. Always remember that. And if you marry the two and you're patient, you can layer a truly beautiful picture. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, I have to indicate the belly first. So maybe there's something underneath here. Look how loose this is. So I'm going to keep these jellyfish-like tentacles underneath pretty loose. Okay. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to indicate some more shadowing of where the tentacles are coming out of the exoskeleton body because you really can't have Lovecraftian horror without something with an exoskeleton, right? I mean, it, it, you could, but it just wouldn't seem complete. And I'm kind of partial to insects too. So I think it works out great that we're doing a triangle creature, which is basic, basic triangle shape, but it also has exoskeletons and tentacles. Okay. So here's another little trick that I'm going to show you with depth. So let me finish the side of this body right here. Let me make sure I get at the right angle. There we go. And I'm just going to walk it up like this. Like that. I put a little bit on the side right here. I'm going to teach you guys a really easy way to do core shadows too, especially for rounded objects or tapered and rounded objects. Okay, so once we got that, here's something that I want you guys to pay attention to in it when it comes to depth and, and having one set of values play off the other set. Obviously, the tentacles are gonna be lighter in color, well, I'm sorry, lighter in tone, or darker, depending on what you put for the belly. So underneath here, I'm gonna fill that in very, very lightly. I'm gonna go to a different angle again. All right, so this is really starting to come together and I'm keeping each stroke. So if I do this in slow motion, those of you that are following along with me, every time you go up and you go back down and up and down, make sure that each stroke is close together. Your shading is gonna look like crap if the gaps are wide because then no matter how many times you turn your page or you try to fill in the gaps, they're always going to be a gap but the tighter you have it, the quicker it's going to fill everything in. And it just, it takes practice. Like, it's easier said than done. I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and lecture you on, you know, why it always has to be closer. No, I'm just telling you this 
as a trick to help you know propel your drawing skills faster than normal okay um now that we have this established it's it's kind of very it's very similar to the top here and that's okay if it's similar to the top there then we can start playing off these values and making everything in the underbelly a little darker now you'll notice that the shading went completely on top of the tentacles. So I have a choice to make. I can either make the tentacles dark and keep that underbelly lighter or vice versa. I think I'm gonna keep the tentacles lighter. So what that means is I'm just gonna to continue to shade on top of the tentacles and also cover that underbelly until I get something that I'm happy with. As I'm putting in these values, I'm going to start to darken the tentacles. Now, I'm keeping my hand movements pretty loose. And when I'm talking about depth, I mean everything, this is what I mentioned earlier. I'm talking about the edges and how whatever's closest to you gets a little bit darker of a treatment. And then as it moves back into or near the body, it's going to get a little lighter doesn't always have to play off like that, but it's good to do that just because it shows depth with the minimal amount of shading needed. I'm gonna show you another little trick shading here in a second. I think I'm gonna keep, oh yeah, this tentacle needs it. This is really close. It's also good that the more tentacles you have, make sure that each one is doing something unique. This one is kind of similar to this, but this one's curled up more. This one is similar to that one, but this is outstretched more. So just make sure that there's a little bit of, like I said before, chaos. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to put some more value on the tip of that tentacle and then I'm gonna slowly fade it off up to the rest. But here's where you need to play off the two tones meeting each other. You see how that's too similar now? Okay, to the body of underneath the tentacle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna darken it a little bit more and make sure there's enough contrast there to really show depth. Now notice, this is a little too similar to that. So what do I gotta do now? Well, I'm gonna take that black Prismacolor and I'm just gonna darken the tip of that tentacle right there and I'm just gonna fade off some of that value. And boom. Now we have a tentacle that looks like it's coming off the page, doesn't it? That's what I love about doing depth and atmospheric perspective with your creature sketches. It, it just really looks like it's coming out at you. I'm gonna put some darker treatment right in here, the exoskeleton, how it opens up. Speaking of opening up, there probably should be an underbelly to this critter too. And maybe the uh, exoskeleton kind of, I don't know what it does. Maybe it breaks off in the belly underneath, but it doesn't really matter because that's not our focal point. What is our focal point is that you know the tentacles are coming out and also the tentacles themselves are believable. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some more value in this one right here. And you can do a bunch of things with tentacles, guys. You could do what, what's on octopus, octopi, where you know you have like little suckers why not do that just put little circles it's a good way to add texture to it and keep things interesting but you don't have to draw what's known i mean you don't have to do that and i i'm gonna jump around too i like to jump around on my creatures i don't like to or my drawings for that matter i don't really like to stay in one area for ever and ever and ever it's just annoying and i get tired of it <laughs> But I'm gonna show you guys a trick on the core shadow. So I'm gonna do a little bit darker of a line on the outside of the body. And here's where the core shadow comes at. Actually here, let's do this real quick. Put some little divots in there so you can see them and that's on the, the head. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is the core shadow. So let's just apply the light source. And the highlight is gonna look like it, it looks like it's gonna hit right there. So that means that all along this side of the body, you gotta follow the contours of the body too, but I'm just doing a straight line just to indicate it quickly. 
this is going to be the highlight. Over here, the opposite side of the light projection is the core shadow. Here's how you do it. A cone, you got to be careful because the core shadow actually starts as a point at the top. And then the core shadow gradually fans outward as you spread down the wider base of the cone. Okay, now I'm holding my pencil like this, but it's off the camera. It's really loose. I mean, look how much real estate's left up here. Barely anything at all. Okay, and I'm using my pinky as a guide, and I'm making sure that I run the pencil up and down very lightly, making sure that my pencil is still sharp. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna sharpen more of it. Okay, now after I sharpen that, I'm gonna run it down the body like so. And I'm gonna fan off that core shadow. So it's gonna start at a point and it's actually gonna spread like this as it comes down the body of the cone. It's, it's still a cone, everyone. But you're not done. This is, this is where the realism of rendering a basic shape with pencil is either going to look really good or really bad. And that is you have to fade off value from that core shadow onto the body. So how to do that? You're gonna slightly turn your pencil at an angle and you're just gonna start applying very, very lightly values that are fanning off from that original dark core shadow. You're not done yet though. I'm gonna turn the paper and you're probably gonna to need to do this several times until you do not see a, a line there, okay? All you're gonna see is darker value moving up the side and it fades off nicely. And you're gonna keep doing it. You might be able to achieve this in three passes. You might have to do 30. No joke, but at the end of the day, the more power you put, well, the more time you put into this, the better it's gonna look. I've known students that spend over an hour with just the core shadows, especially on spheres. Because if you screw it up on a sphere, it's really noticeable because the sphere doesn't look round anymore. With the cone, you can kind of get away with it because there's only this one surface that needs to be rounded. But with a sphere, you get the whole dang thing. Okay, and I'm gonna keep going. And I'm just gonna march it up. And you have to be careful with the number two. When you get higher ups, even with a typical H, you don't even have to go into like the B's yet. But you know, when you go into the H's, it's um, harder graphite, so you gotta be careful about your shading. Now number two, it's either a 2B, like I, this one's a 2H, okay? Like an HB. Wait, what is it? Oh, it's a number two HB, okay. Still a typical number two pencil. There we go. And this has to be marched around the cone. So you're just gonna continue that along the body. Okay, and then I'm gonna get a little daring. I'm using black Prismacolor. Once this is down, it's down. There is no turning back. I'm just gonna lightly kind of fill in some of those gaps that maybe the graphite didn't give me or didn't cover. I'm still trying to keep that as a point up there. There we go. Now you really start to see this nice core shadow right here. The core shadow is also going to happen on each tentacle too. All right, so I'll just imagine where that light source is, where it's hitting each tentacle, and your core shadow is gonna be on the opposite end of that. So let's, let's play up some more values on the belly. See how I hop around? That's just how I do. All right because I want those tentacles to be darker than the underbelly, but I also want to put some more values in on the belly. And over here, it doesn't matter what's happening. I could fade off some, some graphite. It looks like it's floating, you know, why not? Um, Lovecraft creatures can't, I mean, they can't be complete without some spikes because that's the most fun you're ever going to have is putting spikes on a creature, right? And this creature is probably not nice, <laughs> so, I'm also trying to keep things as simple as possible for you all. So you're not like freaking out, like, how am I gonna spend five hours on the details? I'm like, no, 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 don't worry about that. All right, let's, let's see what else we can do with the body here. Maybe these can be little vents. And what's cool about 
layering your, your shading is that I'm putting in these vents right on top of that core shadow and I'm just fading off different values. So now what you have is you have that vent value, that darkness, play off of the core shadow, which is tied a little lighter. And look how real those look, because I didn't need to draw an outline. And that's the other thing that I want to touch base with when you guys draw. If you want something to look realistic, quit outlining everything, because it just looks cartoony. And if you're going for that cell shading look, totally fine. Like, if you're doing manga, great. Like, I know some amazing manga artists. But if you want to do hyper-realism and super-realistic pencil renderings, then you need to stop outlining everything. There we go. Because what happened, watch, watch this. That core shadow and all that foundational uh, shading that I laid in there, if I just push a little harder on top of all of that and just fade that off, look what that did. It created an edge, a realistic-looking edge, like I just pushed my pencil in Play-Doh or something. It's beautiful. I mean, well, okay, maybe beautiful is a little excessive, but it's looking nicer. <laughs> okay, and there's still some differences in values that need to be fixed right here, too. Totally had to edit out a ambulance going by. <laughs> but anyway, I'm adding more values to the tentacle down here. Just a slightly darker than the underbelly. Keep, keep the depth going. Now notice, let's turn this up like this. This isn't complicated. There's not a lot going on. It's just about layering. You have a cone, and then you basically have an, an upside down cone, and then you have tentacles coming out, and I'm just layering values on it. There's so much power to be had with layering. So now I'm just gonna continue to put some values on the body right here. Okay, because you're gonna have another core shadow on this side, and you're gonna wanna follow the contours of the body but it's just gonna be thinner. This, this is the highlight area right there. And you wanna fade all of this off, the core shadow on the right side. You're gonna fade it off around that body. So let's put some more realistic structure right on the side here. So to give a truly exoskeleton shape where there's you know, like divots and there's a, a radius going around here, I'm gonna put a darker treatment it's gonna look like a lip almost, or coral even. Probably better off to just call it coral. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put, also, you guys could probably relate. You ever get that sweet spot when you, when you start sketching and you have a sharpened pencil and you start shading on that one direction and it's just really nice and you never want it to go away. Yeah, I hate when it has to go away, don't you? It's really annoying. Okay, so once I got that, there we go. So now we got a pretty cool looking, I guess you can call it a lip. And then I'm gonna break that lip up. So I'm just gonna do some thick to thin lines. So start dark, add light. Start dark, add some lightness. I'm gonna break this up, make it a little bit more interesting. And this is truly otherworldly. I can't really think of anything on earth that this kind of resembles. Um, Please comment below if, if you can think of something. It's like a mixture of a coral, starfish, barnacle, jellyfish. I don't know what else. Those of you that are marine biologists, I would love to hear what you have seen underwater or if you study that kind of stuff religiously. And anytime I do a nice coating of graphite that kind of adds that grayness to it, especially on white background or white paper. I always like to push a little harder and add some darkened bumps and spikes and imperfections of the skin in random places. And then I like to add some value around those little bumps. It just shows that there's structure in the front where there's the least amount of value added. Because we can just put details all day right in here. This is the sweet spot. This is what I'm showing you guys. You know, I'm gonna put most of the texturing and everything right up front I'm going to show it off and all that's in shadow anyway that's the other thing you got to pay attention if you have some overhang and body structure you want to make sure that if your light source is above that there's going to be a nice looking convincible cast shadow on any other body part from that overhang 
Okay, so like these tentacles, well, the lip right here, yeah, these tentacles are going inside that exoskeleton, so that's all going to be in shadow. Okay, and then you're just going to fade that off down there on the belly. Because essentially, I can take this body, and I can just add some really cool little shapes in here. Maybe it's it's broken up. Okay, I gotta eventually put the vents on the other side too to even it out. It's just like nature. It looks like it's perfectly symmetrical, but it's not quite. It's like our faces. We all have that good side. And then we have that not so good side that we don't want anybody to take a picture of. <clears throat> so the other thing I want to do is I just want to add some darkness in to the side of the tentacles here and then get really fun. Now watch the looseness. Everything up under here is interpretational. And we can put some really crazy tentacles and who knows what else, tissue coming off of there. That's truly, truly alien. So if you have not done so already and you're new to this channel, please check the links in the description because I have a link for our Creature Design Workshop Discord. Okay, I accept all levels of skill there. We go over the basics, we have some 3D in there. It's a bustling community. There are people joining every single day. And if you, you know, and, and I have noticed that you guys have been spreading the word around on that Discord. And it's, it's a free link, so you can just use that link to bring other people in. Um, you know, this, these start to get passed around on Reddit and other social media platforms, and it really helps. And it's, uh, it's growing. We're almost at 1,000 members already, and at, ever since I made it public. So it's been a lot of fun to see it grow. They have a, uh, or we have a personal work channel where you can post any work that you're currently working on. We got some professionals in there too, people that are working in the industry, both in film and games, and they'll give you a, some nice, helpful critique instead of just being your best friend and going, oh yeah, that looks good, honey, and it really sucks. Like, you need to hear that it sucks, right? <laughs> we, we don't want to hear that our work sucks, but we need to hear that our work sucks so we know to get better. But I hope you enjoyed today's lesson, and please check the... Uh, creating creatures from a basic cube, cylinder, and sphere also. And this is going to round it off. So I have some more in-depth sketch tutorials coming up for basic shapes and how to do straight lines with your arm, and you don't need a pencil. Okay, so things like that. And I'm also starting a foundational drawing series. I'm going to have some digital products available very soon. So I would love to hear your opinions about what we should name this critter. I don't have a name for it. You know, I don't think anybody has named anything truly crazy yet, but uh, we have a couple Bills and Gertrudes. Uh, kind of looks like a Helga, doesn't it? I don't know why. Maybe a Tim. Definitely not Todd. I don't know. <laughs> but have fun drawing, everybody, and I would love to see your work. So join the Discord. I'll see you later.